So now that we have our formula for simple interest, and you remember, remember what that was, I equals P R T, where I is the interest earned, P is the principal, right? It's kind of a technical financial term. Principal is the amount you invest. R is the interest rate as a decimal, and T is the time, All right? And the one thing I really want to emphasize here is R and T have to be consistent. If R is an annual interest rate, when we talked about that, that's how interest rates are usually given, then T must be the time, the length of the investment in years. All right, so let's see how we would do this here, right? Um, you invest $1,000 at 2% for three years, earning simple interest. How much interest will you earn? Well, the, the question says simple interest, so I know I'm looking at the simple interest formula here, right? I've got it on the screen. What I like to do is I'm going to write down all the parts, P, R, and T, and we'll, let's, we'll include I here as well. All right, so now I go back to the question. And I start looking at the numbers and pulling them out. I'm trying, trying to fit them into these variables here. So we're going to invest $1,000. That's the principal. 2% is the interest rate. You remember, we need that to be a decimal. T, that's the time. That's three years. And I am looking for the interest. Excellent. That's what I need. right? I know the value of every variable except for one. So I should be able to calculate that one. So let's put these numbers in here. I equals 2,000 times 0 0.02 times 3. Right? And then uh, now it's just multiplying it out, right? You go to your calculator if you need to. If you multiply those three numbers together, you get $120. So you earn $120. Interest. All right, pretty straightforward application. Right? We just, just dropped the numbers in, did a little arithmetic. Okay, so take a look at this situation, right? Um, again, the, the question tells us we're talking about a simple interest scenario. So I'm going to start with I equals PRT. And let's pull out the values. I, P, R, and T. We're investing $2,000, that's the principal. The interest rate is three and a half, so I'm gonna make that 0 0.035, <coughs> excuse me, for six months. So here's where we need to be careful. Remember what I said on the last slide. The, the time values have to be consistent because the, the interest rate is an annual rate. This needs to be the time in years. Well, how do we convert months to years? Well, I'm gonna take that month number and divide by 12. Yeah, that, that makes sense, right? Six months, that's half a year. All right, so let's put those numbers in here. Now it's just a little arithmetic. 2,000 times 0 0.035 times 0 0.5, which is 1,000 times 0 0.035. That is 35. So again, I'll state the answer. You earn... $35 in interest. Okay, so now we, we've seen we've seen consistency, right? How, how to make the variables consistent with each other. Uh, how, how about this one? Right, again, we're talking about a simple interest scenario. Um, how much would you have, well, so simple interest. Let's, let's get our formula out. We're actually gonna have to tweak this a little bit, but we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, I, P, R, and T. Okay, so how much would you have to invest today? Excellent. I'm looking for the principal. To have $1,000. Now, $1,000, that's not the interest. right? That's the total value. It's called the future value of the investment. All right, so let, let's circle back to that one. Let, let's do the other parts here. After three years, so the time is three at an interest rate of 
4.5%. Uh, so that's 0, 4, 5. All right, now what am I going to do about this situation here? Um, I, I'm not given the interest. I'm given the total value. Well, let, let's think about what, what, what is the total value, right? The total value, total, let's call it A, right? A for amount, right? This is equal to the amount you put in, that's the principal, plus the interest that you earned. Okay, well, look, look, I'm going to replace the I over here with PRT. So this is P plus PRT. And that's, that's good, right? Because what, what do I know? Um, I know A. A is the total value in the future. That's $1,000. Now, look at this formula. I know everything in that formula except for A. I know, uh, no, excuse me, I know A, I know R, I know T, I want to find P. Right, so let's put everything else in here. I'm going to put a thousand in here for A. I don't know P. Plus P, R is 0 0.045, and T is 3. Okay, let's see. Let, let's do a little cleanup. Right, 1,000 equals P plus 0 0.045 times 3. That's 1, excuse me, 0.135P. And now look, I can combine those two terms together. This is 1,000 equals 1.135P. And that's it. We're there. Divide both sides by 1.135. Five. They cancel over here. All that's left is P and 1,000 divided by 1.135 is $881.06. Right? So that's, that's my answer. You need to invest eight hundred eighty one dollars and six cents now some some professors some some textbooks they, they will give you this as a second formula right they'll, they'll say there are, there are two formulas here there's this one for the interest and there's this one for the final amount or the future value okay I mean there, there's nothing wrong with that um, you know if, if you've watched if you've watched these lectures you know I am not a big fan of having a, a, a formula for every situation you know a, a dozens of formulas you have to memorize to me it, this is this is a pretty quick chain of reasoning right i know i'm talking about the, the total value instead of the interest well the total value is just this and then i do a little substitution that works for me if you prefer formulas absolutely memorize both of them put both of them on your index cards whatever it is you're doing for your studying right uh either way is just fine Okay, so what's next? Well, you, you notice I made an assumption, right? If you think back to how we we calculated the formula, right? I said after year one, we have principal times the rate. After year two, we have principal times the rate and so on. I made a big assumption here. I assume that the principal isn't changing. Right, so if, if you think about it, at the end of year one, you earned this interest, this PR amount. What happened to it? Well, there, the assumption in, in compound interest or in simple interest is that you take that interest out. So the principal stays the same year on year for however long you're doing this. Well, what if you don't do that? What if instead you take this interest and you put it back. So now the second year, the principal has changed. It's no longer P, it's P plus I. So it's gotten bigger, right? And it'll get bigger again in the third year and bigger again in the fourth year and so on. Right? This is a very common investment situation. A lot of savings accounts, uh, CDs, certificates of deposits, for example, work this way. Um, in contrast to simple interest, this is called compound interest. 
that's going to be where we go in, in the next lectures in this series.